In this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over the, some of the compounds produced by the cannabis plant. All right, let's get into some compounds produced by cannabis. So first off, can produces many compounds. I can't cover them all here. I'm just gonna to touch on some of the major highlights because cannabis is a complex plant with over 500 chemical entities. More than 100 of them are cannabinoid compounds alone. Some of them actually have opposing effects. Even though cannabis has been used and cultivated by mankind for at least 6,000 years, our current knowledge of its pharmaceutical properties is based on studies which may have taken place only since the end of the 19th century. So basically we have a lot more to learn about this uh, plant and some of the compounds that it's producing and how they may best be utilized. So first I'll start with some of the physical structures, the trichomes as we can see right here. These are the physical structures that contain the cannabinoids, flavonoids, and terpenes. So while these uh, chemicals are going to be produced or chemicals will be produced over the course of the plant, really it's these trichomes, these structures here uh, that we're going to be looking at. These small, what looks like little white, um, almost like sugar dots, so to speak. These area of right here, these trichomes, that's where most of the cannabinoids that we're looking for for pharmaceutical purposes are going to be produced in the plant. So let's start with the first one, kind of the one probably most people associate with cannabis, and that's THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol. This is the uh, psychoactive compound that generates the marijuana or typically high feeling. As generated, it's, it's the greater percent THC, the more potent the strain. THC can also act as an appetite suppressant with also some medical benefits such as anti-anxiety. And this is kind of what the chemical structure here looks like of tetrahydrocannabinol. Now CBD, something else we've probably heard a lot about, um, cannabidiol is how that's pronounced. I try to pronounce, uh, provide a pronunciation I should say here uh, so you can kind of deconstruct these very long and complex terms. The CBD is a non-psychoactive chemical component, basically doesn't get you high, has many medical benefits such as suppressing seizures, pain relief, and improved sleep. Often CBD extraction is used to make oils, edibles, or topicals for different uh, medical benefits with also the ease of application for the user, more so than just the dry flower. Then we can get to the THC compared or versus CBD, and these are both cannabinoids produced by cannabis. And we could see here kind of the, um, if you will, the original molecule, CBGA, can then be through the plant made into THC or CBD. So a lot of uh, growers were also looking at CBG dominant varieties. Uh, so they could make whatever ratio that they were that they deemed desirable. Uh, keep in mind though, plants with high THC produce that strong euphoric high. Uh, can also reduce feelings of anxiety as well as dizziness. Plants with high CBDs uh, lack that euphoric high and have great medical benefits, potential for pain, inflammation, epilepsy, as well as seizures. So CBD a lot, and especially um, younger children, has been shown to reduce seizures, um, and that's what's hopefully helped gain uh, some popularity here in the medical community. Now, in addition to just those, we have THCV, tetrahydrocannabinoid, which produces a trippy high that comes on quick and is often associated with a caffeine rush because of its high energy compound. However, keep in mind that THCV must reach uh, 428 degrees Fahrenheit in order to be activated. Uh, it may help with blood sugar regulation as well. However, if you suffer from anxiety, it would be advised to stay away from varieties that have elevated levels of THCV. Just a word of caution there. Then we have CBN, which is cannabinol. Uh, not well documented at the current time, but shares some characteristics of CBD with less potency. It does show promise as a sleep aid and is typically found in low percentages and needs to be professionally isolated uh, from the plant material. Then we have CBG. So as I mentioned before, uh, one that gained some popularity simply because it's kind of that um, stem cell molecule of THC and CBD. And it's pronounced cannabidiol. This compound is gaining popularity since it's the precursor to THC, CBD, as well as CBC, as well as some other minor cannabinoids. It's not present in high amounts because it's quickly converted by the plant to other compounds, but it does show promise to reduce inflammation as an, and also can be used as an antibacterial agent and along with some other medical benefits. It's often, often been referred to as the stem cell of cannabis and could serve as the building block for many compounds. And this is why some growers get really interested in breeding this, 
because it's that starting point, it's that early point that then uh, if they had a lot of that, they could then figure out these different synthases and produce uh, the ratios of compounds that they wanted in the end. Then we get to terpenes. So uh, terpenes are aromatic um, organic compounds, which are typically oils that are increased in the trichomes of the plant. They naturally occur in plants to reduce uh, herbivore feeding and increase odds of pollination. These compounds produce the unique flavors, colors, and smells of the plant, but of course are not limited to cannabis. We can see here pine sap. Um, we're probably familiar with that um, aroma associated with pine trees. That is an example of another plant producing these terpenes. And then lastly, we have uh, flavonoids here, uh, and these are a group of natural substances with variable phenolic structures and are found in fruits, vegetables, grains, bark, roots, stems, flowers, tea, and also wine. These are compounds that are responsible for the color and aroma of flowers and can also help attract pollinators. In addition, they can protect plants from different biotic and abiotic stresses and can act as UV light filters, for example, anthocyanins. We can kind of see that here. Poison ivy might be familiar with. It's usually a green leaf. Uh, here, when it first emerges, it has a lot of red tones to it. That's its way of protecting or shielding itself from the harmful effects of the UV light until it gets established. In cannabis, uh, flavonoids may offer some synergistic effects, but of course more research is needed, and hopefully that research will be occurring uh, with the gaining of popularity uh, within the medical community of just unlocking some of the powers that the cannabis plant may have.